Hey everyone, Jordan with the Young Turks, TYT Politics. It is Monday, I believe it is July 5th today, and big, big political news. Uh, FBI Director James Comey made a surprise announcement today to uh, give an update on the investigation into Hillary Clinton's use of private email server. If you were watching it the whole time, everything he was saying uh, sounded very much like he was going to recommend to the Department of Justice a uh, recommendation. He decided not to do that. Uh, he said that any prosecutor, any reasonable prosecutor, would not recommend a uh, federal uh, criminal charges against Hillary Clinton for the use of private email server. But he did tear into her pretty good. Uh, let me give you the specifics. So he explained why the investigation took so long, a lot of emails to sort through, uh, as well as the fact that Hillary Clinton's lawyers actually uh, deleted a lot of emails that they could not recover. So uh, whether that was intentional or not, we'll get to. But here's the details of what Comey said. Uh, they found 110 emails had classified emails, information within them. So 110 emails that Hillary Clinton sent or received, but in this case sent, had classified uh, information in them. 36 emails had secret info, which is a, a notch under classified uh, categor categorization, and eight had confidential information, which is the lowest form of um, security categorization. But 110 emails that she sent had classified, classified email information in them at the time she sent to receive them. This is this is a direct uh, contradiction of what Hillary Clinton said. She's been saying f throughout the campaign that she never sent classified information from her personal email. Um, this is saying she did send classified information from her personal email. Now, the, a, lot of, a lot of the emails were changed to classified after she sent them. So she was saying, I never knowingly sent anything that at the time I sent it was labeled as classified. Comey says 110 emails she sent were labeled as classified at the time. So either Hillary Clinton was lying or she doesn't know what she was saying because what she said was not factual. Um, H Director Comey called her actions extremely careless but said that they were not uh, criminal. So basically he was saying any any uh, diplomat, any leader should have known that although something's not categorized as classified, there's information in those emails that Hillary Clinton should have known were classified. She also, he also said um, there could have been information, there, uh, the emails could have been uh, exposed to foreign actors, meaning hackers. So basically, Comey pretty much tore into her, said she acted extremely carelessly, and also said that the FBI could not uncover all the emails because Hillary Clinton's lawyers uh, deleted many of them, and the FBI couldn't uncover some of those. So basically, uh, I'm going to let the pundits get into the legality, uh, whether she should have been indicted, shouldn't have been indicted. Personally, to me, the issue is not so much whether she should have been indicted. I don't pretend to be an expert, a lawyer. I, I, I read a lot of experts. Uh, a lot of experts I've read said any other person than Hillary Clinton probably either would have been indicted or would have been charged in some way for these actions. So I think that is what this case is about. Obviously, it had huge implications for the presidential election. But if you look at it, this, these are different rules for the powerful, right? If, if it was a low-level uh, State Department person sending out emails, whether they were classified or not, that had sensitive information, you don't think that person would have been charged with something? You don't think that person? You think that person would have had a year in investigation into it? Absolutely not. And Comey actually said uh, the reason he was even giving a press conference and the reason that he was even um, going into detail about what they found, it was because of the intense focus and interest on Hillary Clinton. So it wasn't lost on him that Hillary Clinton isn't your average private citizen. Now, James Comey essentially said in some of his statements that, uh, let's not forget, another person might have faced uh, legal issues or severe punishment for this. So without saying Hillary Clinton plays by a different set of rules, and the government system we're in essentially uh, treats the powerfully different than me or you. Uh, he didn't say that outright, but a lot of his statements, if you watch it, 
he implied it. Now, something he said that I found very interesting was there is, he basically said there is no case similar to this where a reasonable, a reasonable prosecutor would prosecute. That's not exactly true. Uh, I'm doing a video blog later today. Uh, there was a case of a U.S. Marine who, uh, in a time of they, they thought they were under immediate threat, uh, sent uh, classified information through Gmail, through his Gmail account, uh, to warn his uh, fellow Marines. Uh, again, I'm going to tell the story later in a video blog. To warn his fellow Marines of a possible threat, uh, he is being discharged. He's fighting the discharge, but they have decided to discharge this person. Now, this is much less severe than the Secretary of State of the United States sending work emails, including very uh, sensitive information about drone strikes, uh, about p potential intervention in Syria and Libya, through her personal email made up in her basement at her home in New York, which could easily be hacked by a foreign hacker with the means and the intelligence to do so. Uh, again, this is a Marine who fought for our country and is essentially being discharged for sending a private, uh, excuse me, for sending a classified email through Gmail when uh, he and his comrades thought there was an impending attack. So there are different rules for different people. I don't think anybody could reasonably say that if James Comey was investigating even Bernie Sanders, who is not among the powerful, sure, he's a U.S. senator, but nobody would think that career prosecutors or anybody would w would look at Bernie Sanders the same way as Hillary Clinton. Bernie Sanders doesn't come from the moneyed crowd. Bernie Sanders isn't at the cocktail pa cocktail parties at night. He's not taken you know hundreds of thousands of dollars dollars in many cases millions of dollars from hedge fund guys and Wall Street traders and fossil fuel and oil companies. So, you think Bernie Sanders would have got the same latitude and flexibility as Hillary Clinton? I don't. And I, I find that questionable. I also think, more importantly, a lot of today is going to be focused on uh, whether she should have been indicted or whether she shouldn't have been indicted. I, I am not going to just say things to appease my audience. I don't know if she should have been indicted because I'm not an expert. Everything I've read lends me to believe any other citizen not named Hillary Clinton or someone in her category would have been indicted. So whether she should have... Whether she should have been indicted for this infraction, I can't give you the answer. But what I do know is people under her class and category probably would have. Now, how does this affect the election? I think, uh, as Jenk, my, my fearless boss, uh, did a Facebook Live earlier, he has said uh, this essentially cements her as a Democratic nominee. I agree with that. I think uh, this was the cloud hanging over her, and she will be the Democratic nominee. Uh, but I, I also think that this really puts her into jeopardy uh, much more than, you know, the Nate Silvers of the world or uh, people in that class think. Because at the end of the day, when you look at the 2008 election, foreign policy played a big factor. A lot of people think that Obama's, Obama was going to beat McCain anyway. But the reason Obama beat Hillary in particular was because he was correct on Iraq and she was wrong in Iraq. And at that time, we were still in Iraq. In 2012, foreign policy played less of an impact. Uh, the economy was still teetering. Obama was getting hit from all sides about, you know, the economic recovery is very slow and, you know, what he, he hasn't done enough. Uh, the reason he won overwhelmingly was because Romney was so weak and this tape came out showing Romney basically hates poor people. Um, now, but this election, I think, is going to have a mix of both. I think the foreign policy threat it's not going to be as, as, as important as the economy. Uh, I think the economy is number one, including jobs, the trade deals, which are now being brought to the forefront by Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump to a certain extent. But what I do think, uh, foreign policy, I mean, you're having attack after attack after attack by ISIS, uh, internationally, but also domestically. How many times have we seen, we've now seen two cases where American Americans have killed many, many people, San Bernardino, California, and of course the tragedy in Orlando, uh, American-born or otherwise, they might have not been working with I ISIS directly, but, you know, expressing their loyalty and admiration for ISIS after the fact. People do not feel safe. Uh, Orlando was the largest terrorist attack on American soil since 9-11, and it was the largest terrorist attack, um, you know, you're talking a mass shooting ever in America. 
So I think foreign policy is going to play a very, very uh, important and possibly deciding factor. It, when you look at the economy, you have 38,000 jobs were created last month. You have trade becoming a big issue. You have this issue of globalization and its negative impact on American workers. So if you think about it, how, how exactly is Hillary Clinton going to step on a debate stage when the topic is foreign policy and sound reputable? Sure, she was a secretary of state, but you just had the FBI director essentially calling her an extremely careless secretary of state. You obviously have her bad judgment on Iraq. You obviously have her terrible judgment on Libya, which President Obama has called the biggest mistake of his presidency. The intervention in Libya, which overthrew uh, Modaf, uh, Gaddafi, but also left a huge vacuum of terrible you know, insurgents and terrorists causing havoc in Libya. You also have Hillary Clinton, it's been documented, has tried to push uh, President Obama to take further action in Syria. You also have Hillary Clinton trying to uh, ha try to push President Obama to send more troops to Afghanistan. Obama decided on 30,000, Hillary pushed them on 40,000. She she, people could talk about experience all you want, but in that foreign policy debate, which is not going to be a throwaway debate like last in 2012, this is going to be a, a very important debate. Americans are paying attention. Americans want to want to feel safe. Americans want to feel like their commander in chief is going to take care of ISIS and other threats. Hillary Clinton doesn't really have a, a very. Let me restate that. Hillary Clinton has a bad record on foreign policy, and whether she was indicted or not, I mean, this makes it even worse. The wild card here, Donald Trump. I don't support Donald Trump. I won't vote for Donald Trump. But I will say, as a political matter. If Donald Trump stops using racist language, if Donald Trump becomes more polished, if Donald Trump focuses on jobs, on trade, on the sluggish economy, on, as he likes to call it, crooked Hillary. And Donald Trump, frankly, he doesn't have the foreign policy baggage because he's not a politician. He, there's no votes. He hasn't voted on anything. Uh, Donald Trump will have a chance, particularly in swing states, because if you want to look at the deciding factor in elections, it's the swing states, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Florida. Now you're looking at states like Wisconsin. Uh, you're looking at states like Michigan, the entire Rust Belt region, but independents and millennials. We already know Hillary Clinton's going to have a tough job with millennials. We also know independents uh, have been favorable to Trump, at least in the primary, have not been favorable to Hillary Clinton. So. I think what you're looking at here is if Trump could become somewhat polished, if Trump could kind of make a few inroads with the groups that he's offended, Latinos, African Americans, women, I mean, we're talking a lot, but if he could stop doing damage with those groups and start winning some over through more specific policies, more polished talk, and attacking Hillary Clinton, which with this latest uh, I, I would call it a crucifixion. I mean, this FBI director did not hold back on how careless, reckless Hillary Clinton is and how she should have known better. Donald Trump is going to, Donald Trump will become a more appealing candidate. And those debates are going to be, to me, the deciding factor. You got Hillary Clinton up there saying her experience, she's been around the world as a Secretary of State, but Donald Trump can say, all I gotta say, Iraq, Libya, Syria, private email server, the end. I think he's going to have a much better chance. Uh, we will see who both pick as their vice presidential candidate. I think that will play uh, an important, a more important uh, factor than usual. But I think what this did today, it might have not fundamentally changed the game in terms of possibly presenting a new Democratic nominee, but it did change the game, I think, in terms of whether Donald Trump could be competitive against her. I think the answer is yes. Stay tuned for more on youtube.com slash tytpolitics. Uh, I'll be doing a video blog more specifically on the email non-indictment today. Again, jordan, youtube.com slash tytpolitics. Thanks for watching.